Welcome to the Radio Horror Show. Tonight we are talking about the new film from the return of Scream less than a year ago because they made it super duper fast. Uh, this is part six. It it was uh, it was completely different than the last five. They definitely try to do different things and uh, new new um, new takes on old uh, genre tropes. They they definitely talk about it like every film in the Scream franchise, how they want to be completely different in every which way they possibly can. Um, and this is last time it was a requel, and this time it's whatever the hell they called it. I I don't even know. They call it a franchise. It's been a franchise since there were you know three films but uh this is uh the new scream new killers new cast sort of uh at least a couple new uh characters uh at least a couple of uh returning characters and uh we're gonna talk about it with katie the blonde in front of fear who's directed this movie too was it the same as the last one yes matthew bettinelli open and tyler gillette cool and starring uh as they say in the film, the core four, um, Melissa Barrera as Sam, Jenna Ortega as Tara, Mason Gooding as Chad, and Jasmine Savoy Brown as Mindy. Those are the four uh, kids who survived the Scream 5. They are now in college, or at least Chad, Mindy, and Tara are in college. Uh, Sam is there as a somewhat bodyguard for Tara, because Tara hasn't really processed everything that has happened in Scream 5, she's trying to just ignore it. And I can understand that, but also it's, I, I, I don't know if that would actually happen. I mean, just for scholastic purposes. I don't know. I, I don't see that happening. But I mean, she does make a good point. She doesn't want three days in her, um, three days that she experienced to determine the rest of her life. And I think that was a great um, line that she did. But I will say that the beginning of Scream 6 definitely begins like the beginning of Scream 2. You have multiple kills. This is not a spoiler. I believe some of this is in the uh, poster or uh, the trailers. Uh, the one kill broke my heart, but then it also wasn't that great of practical effects. The second one, though, Woo! They pulled out all the stops on that. I mean, I will say this. I definitely figured out the killer very quickly. Like, I mean, there are some definite huge flags that it's it's almost embarrassingly obvious and all and actually insultingly obvious, like kind of who it is. No offense if you don't um, figure it out. Uh, but uh what was the point of what i was saying i figured out the killer pretty quick oh but the practical effects in this film uh in this version i think i would actually put that up to the same as um on par like on the level as as the first one because i mean i think we'll all remember what it was like when uh drew barrymore was gutted in the first scream like she's hanging from that tree she's She's like hung by her intestine. Her guts are like spilling out, like the steam's coming off from when her parents come home. That's pretty, that's that's gnarly. You really can't get over that. This one definitely had some similar aspects of it. There's uh, some stuff in a refrigerator. There's multiple body parts. There's a character that dies and you actually see like what happens. Um, and that was great because when the first kill happened, I wanted to be like, dude, you can't stab someone and then show where they were stabbed and like not show like that there's like actual flesh and bone like coming out. Like that's kind of horror 101. Like you guys have a big enough bu budget that that could have been done. It's very disappointing. Um, I think the performances were better. One of the things I did not like about Scream 5, I think Melissa Barrera is a beautiful woman. I think she's got a great voice. I think she kind of had dead eyes in Scream 5, especially when she was doing some monologues that were supposed to be conveying emotion. I did not see that. I definitely, it was, it was much, much better in this one. I don't want to say it's, you know, woo, but it definitely was much, much better. Uh, I 
think the nostalgia factor is always going to be, you know, when you have a franchise film, especially one like this, it's going to be a huge aspect in it. I do not see how they're going to top that, though, with the nostalgia factor in this. This one was off the charts. Like, honestly, they brought back some stuff in this that it's like, it took me some of the some of the things they had actually took me a couple of seconds to figure out what they were. And then I'm like, oh, kudos. Nice. That's very nice. It's nice. They had some characters that uh, maybe you thought had passed away in previous films that are back. That was fantastic. Uh, hey, oh, woman power with um, different characters. Uh, and um, this is a spoiler. Uh, Gail. Poor Gail, that girl, that woman can take a punch, man. In each one of these films, I think only in five and maybe three that did she not get, did she get punched in four? I don't know. There's only been a few that she hasn't gotten punched. Right now, I feel like she's half and half that she gets punched in the face. I mean, give her a break. She didn't get punched like, in five. I don't know. Um, no, but... she didn't. She, there was no one to punch her because her and Cindy are all bestie friends and yeah, though that's why I was saying it's it's like half and half. So um, she's got three where she gets punched. Spoiler: she gets punched in this one. Uh, it's set in Halloween. It's set in New York. I thought that was great. I love the fact that um, while you're, I mean, someone was wearing a Julia Fox ha um, Halloween costume. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, I liked the different characters that they had. I thought this was a better film than Five. I liked five because of the nostalgia. And then when I thought about it, I thought I had a major issue with the killer because when you've got a five foot two girl that's um, when she puts on the ghost face outfit, then she becomes um, six foot one. I have a major issue with that because it's like, mm, that's not how that works. That's not how stuff works. And this one, they fixed that. Uh, they made sure whoever um, was the person uh, is the actual person in the costume uh platform boots they showed a lot of people's boots yes uh let's see chuckle fucks um is a phrase that should be sweeping the nation because i love it i thought that was great they did that and i did not think this was that bad of a film i don't know if it's going to be on anyone's top 10 list or anything like that but i had a good time with it i know some people who were very upset um with the film and i actually am a fan sorry not sorry but i thought this was better than five and actually i think this is better than four but i will say this this is my prediction because of the way they're doing this with one and um one two and five and six four scream seven which has already been greenlit i predict drum roll please I predict that the killer in Scream 7 is going to be Tara's dad and Melissa's um, person who she thought was her dad, but is not. And then in Scream 8, I'm going to say it's going to be another Ill illegitimate child of Billy Loomis and why can't they get all the attention that um, that Sam got. So that's my that's my premonition for seven and eight. I'm just if they're going to be doing the way the film's been doing this, which that may give away who the killer is. If you know, Scream 2 and all that stuff. I don't want to give away the killer. Watch the film. However, I'm going to say right now, I'm guessing that in Scream 7, it's going to be Tara's dad. What about like a resurrected stew and it's necromancy and they, they bring in the occult and like outside supernatural forces because they've done everything else. I guarantee it's Stab 10 will be in space. They will do Stab 10 in the Scream franchise. Stab, for anyone who's not paid attention, this is like in every film. Well, this is in 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, Stab has been prominent. Stab's not so prominent in this one, by the way. It's, it's in the yeah. background. But if you went to AMC Theater... There's Stab the Musical, apparently. It's in the background at one of the theater marquees of the, um, you know, where you would see the fake Rogers the Musical from Hawkeye and uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. There's Stab the Musical, because of course there is. So, yeah, the the, um, the AMC, the yes, I have those posters, there. but AMC had, um, AMC had um, um, like a, 
like a like a what do you call it a, a New York style poster they were giving away with New York landmarks and New York you know coming soon attractions Times Square that's what I was thinking of so it's a Times Square with ghost faces green face above it um because that's the that's what they use in the stab franchise which is i think a, a pretty funny i mean the last stab movie they made fun of because it was just awful and apparently it didn't make any money so i guarantee they'll do stab based on the last two scream movies and they'll do stab i would love to see a like uh, a stab movie done the problem is with the actors from the first stab movie they're 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 not they're not young enough to do that anymore but they could definitely do a stab film or i would love to see and coming out this September, you can buy it from um, uh, at your local bookstore. You can pick up Scott Lang's uh, book from the Ant-Man movie. I want a Gail Weathers book because they've never done that before. And they've done Etsy fan versions. They're not very good and don't support those. They're pretty terrible. Uh, but I want an actual Gail Weathers written book about the Woodsboro murders the the Sydney Prescott murder of her mom and then what happened in in Scream you know like do that as a combined yeah. book that would be cool I'd buy that in a heartbeat in fact do an audio book hire Courtney Cox to do the audio uh narrative for Audible because I guarantee she'll do it Paul Rudd's doing the audio narrative for the Scott Lang book FYI so <laughs> um, I will, the only reason I, will I bring wait. that up is because of Scott's you know Paul Rudd's connection to slasher movies Halloween and Halloween does show up in this as we did some cool uh, Halloween costumes from everyone they could license apparently Dracula the Wolfman the Mummy the Creature from the Black Lagoon Pinhead Ghostface multiple times Freddy Krueger who made this Skyglass but who else made this Spyglass Media Group, I know, and Paramount. Okay, and so Paramount has have, access to Friday the Thirteenth. That's why they could show the Friday the Thirteenth movie. Yeah, they have access. They had um, Jason, um, Jason Eight in New York and whatnot. And yes. one thing I would note: um, Gail's wardrobe, Courtney Cox, Gail's wardrobe in this movie is as bad as her haircut in Scream Three. Like it's it's really bad. I was very. It was very striking to me, like how. It, I mean, Courtney Cox is a gorgeous woman, and this these these costumes were not great. They really weren't. You can also, um, I think, check check out uh, Jenna Ortega is going to host Saturday Night Live this week. Jenna Ortega is yes. Yes, um, there was a preview of that saying, and th that she was talking about how it was hard not to do the uh, the Wednesday dance or whatever with everyone else doing it. But uh, so they'll be doing some obviously some Wednesday uh, homages and some scream homages. Somebody pointed out there's a really obscure and i mean microscopically obscure friends reference in this movie and you really gotta pay attention to where it is and they said mm -hmm. it has something to do with the wardrobe of gail and how things happened on friends that was constantly being pointed out in news medias and it happens in this movie know exactly what you're talking about so and i yeah. was like really i didn't catch that but maybe it was so fast i was like dipping down into my uh scream soda you can pick these up at amc these are the scream toppers they're 3d cups um by the way cinemark now has available all on their website so scalpers go f yourselves you can go get the ghost face cup the popcorn bucket and the plushie for normal prices now you don't get popcorn and soda with it but you do have to wait till August to pick one up, FYI, because it takes a long time to manufacture these things in China. But stop buying them on eBay from scalpers. And I would like to thank the Horror House for my ghost face mask, because I would not have received this without it. I went to a press screening on last Saturday, and I thought they would have had a couple things like, I don't know, just posters or something for us, and they didn't have anything. So thank you, Horror House, for having that for me, because I actually wanted this for the review and my poster of scream six for the review so thank you very much yes and everyone who got to see scream six on me for free there were 20 giveaways for scream six tickets from radio of horror from allied entertainment uh and fandango.com um i'm pretty much out of those so but they went like that last night when i posted it up on several different uh message boards and my radio horror site and we the messages are still coming through which means i have a post out there somewhere probably that i need to take down because those went within an hour i was up till probably 12 30 taking pictures and messaging people uh yes very cool the earrings mm -hmm. of uh, ghostface with little blood on them do they both have blood yep 
Oh, by the way, this figure came out at least a year before the Scream 5 movie and comes with two different masks or three different masks. It comes with the stab, sorry, so it comes with the stab mask. It comes with the uh, white face mask I have here. And it also comes with the gray ghost face mask, which I'd always thought was a little strange until you see this movie and it's been in the trailers. Ghostface's mask is not your typical chalk white. It's a like Michael Myers aged up mask, like the way it was in Halloween 2018. So that's a bit of a nod and a key, but there was a trailer as well of Courtney Cox walking into what looked like a ghost face museum too. So yes, um, bit of a spoiler in that trailer, but they didn't give too much away, but I thought that was cool. And I am still shocked. There is no scream um, horror, you know, whatever with a bunch of stuff like that. You know what I mean? There I'm going to an X-Files museum coming up this, this uh, summer. So um I know there's been collections of Michael Myers, Jason, and Freddy stuff, so let's get a Scream one going. By the way, there is a Scream documentary people can watch, but it only covers the first three movies. Well, and I think with this one, that could open the door to different types of uh, museums for Scream, because honestly, that would be a cool thing to walk through. Uh, I did like, though, I mean, again, no spoilers, because I don't want to give away who the killer is and stuff like that, but I... I love that it's in the trailer. It's all this stuff. Um, that was great um, that they had that. I thought that was very cool. Again, all of that nostalgia. I mean, they really had a lot that it took me a few, it took me a few minutes, like when they, and they barely go over it, but I mean, it's so much. And I know uh, they had some immersive experiences in California when they're preparing. Um, promoting the film they've definitely had a lot of pre-screenings for this all over the place but they made sure that the embargo was very tight for like last night which is interesting because again I did not think it was that bad I actually liked it better than the first one um, that these kids actually had I felt like they had a little bit more personality and stuff like that and it dives more into their relationship as sisters and stuff like that um, I like uh sam's uh new love interest um hottie patati and um yeah they i think would i have loved to have seen nev campbell yes i think she should have been there i the what the reason the excuse they gave i think was okay uh but um one besides the reveal which i think there were two and there's two major things that give away who the killer is there's also, uh, when they go to a police station, I'm, I've been to New York a few times. This police station they went to, though, looked like it was in Southern California. Like, I have never seen anything that that's what, New York, I mean, there were all these trees. It was all green. It looked like it was a Woodsboro police station. And I'm like, where is this in New York? This makes no sense to me. And I'm a little confused, but okay. Do you know what I'm talking about, Chris? Yeah, no, it definitely was shot um, not entirely like in New York, but I, I, I didn't want to overthink that whole part after the debacle was uh, that was always and will still be to this day. Um, Jason takes Manhattan. Jason yeah. takes nothing at all until the end of the movie. And yeah. I understand why. And I've, I've watched every single documentary and I own that giant Scream Factory box set. But I'm glad that we actually got what felt like New York a lot. Subway. Yep. We, didn't, we didn't get the Statue of Liberty. We didn't get the Empire State Building. Whatever. We don't need that stuff. We we, we don't need landmarks. But we needed to feel like it's New York. The, 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 the park, you know, that was good stuff or whatever. Um, someone complained that they didn't feel like they did anything New Yorkish. I'm like, what were they supposed to do? Go get a New York pizza in the middle of their, you know, whatever with Ghostface? I, I didn't need that either. That, that you're kind of overboarding it, you know what I mean? We got Ghostbusters well, think... coming out later on. Ghostbusters is going to be very New York, so. <laughs> what, do they go with, like, Times Square or, like, all the landmarks? It's like, one, there's so much, I think there's, yeah, that would be. I can't even imagine how much that what the budget would be if they did a lot of that stuff. But it's like, two, come on. You don't, I mean, they're at a college uh, in New York City and all that stuff. So I understand that. But I mean, look, they made the alleyways look like it's an actual city. Yeah. The subway definitely looks like it's an actual, like, bustling, huge metropolis. Like, there was a movie a few years ago where it's like, yes, this is this is very cute that you're supposed to be in New York City, but 
I don't know where the subway station is supposed to be because this is the most immaculate. Like you could eat off these seats. Like it was <laughs> beautiful. And I'm like, no, in Scream 6, like this looks like an actual subway. Like I thought that was great. Um, but yeah, no, it was just the it was just the um police station. And I'm like, this looks like we're back in Woodsboro. I don't know where this is, but I I'm fine. I'm okay with it. It's not, it's not that big of a deal, but I just thought it was a little bit odd. A couple of things that were at my screening. First of all, I saw in 3D. Mm, nothing special. Oh, yeah. Don't. Yeah. yeah. Nothing, no. No. It's just whatever. It was like, okay, this. I. I was literally doing this every five minutes or whatever. Going, I'm not. I'm not getting it. He's not doing this. You know what I mean with a knife or whatever. Uh, but. There was the music video that debuted online, played before the movie. There were th there were interviews with the cast and crew. There were no previews, so the movie started. Thank God, we actually got Great. stuff about the movie ahead of time too. So this was the five o'clock uh, fan event showing, uh, which was why I was able to also like scoop up a couple of these before they you know sold out. So uh, that was really cool. Um, the music video I have to rewatch. I kind of came in and out of it because I because I I saw the interviews and I was like, oh, I'll catch those online. Um, but the inter the music video came in the I came in the middle of. Um, so I'll definitely rewatch it online. Also, first screen movie to get a in music video, as far as I'm aware, unless you go back to the first one, but I don't think the first one had one. I know, I know what you did last summer, did, but that was after Scream came out and the co the clones were coming out, basically. So everything was getting a big media hype. But uh, again, cool. It got a music video in an age where we don't do that anymore, especially on MTV. Well, which, by the way, MTV was the host of the crappy Scream television show. Crappy, oh, good. It's all over the place. Yeah, the soundtrack I thought was solid. So there's yeah. that. And I, I have the scores. I mean, they definitely. Um, I mean, they mentioned franchise. I think five times in the film one is like f this franchise um yeah. stuff they, they talk about franchise a lot and there is a post credit scene but don't hype up it's, it's not funny. leading into like yeah. this it's not leading into like the uh the horror icon avengers so it's no it's, <laughs> it's more of just a laugh at the end and stuff like that but, you know game recognizes game i i say go see it i honestly yeah. I thought it was better i thought it was better than five yeah, it was. It, it definitely had a lot, a lot of entertainment. I think it was. I, in my opinion, it's, I think it's on par of five. Um, I think it's definitely better than four. Uh, just for, for the connections of four being there. Um, still better than three. Sorry, hey, three is the, there was only one great scene in three. It's when Jay and Silent Bob show up. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's no like big ranking with with them for me. Um, still better than the TV show. <laughs> i never watched the tv show the first two seasons are like the first couple of movies um that is a halloween special which retcons the hell out of a character that makes you really not like it and then they did an entire third season by itself with this guy's face back and roger jackson's face back a uh, voice back but then it was terrible it was just i think they were trying to be slasher which was a canadian television show that was much better than them um so Check it out your own risk. Um, recently, four or five seasons plot lines were actually revealed online by MTV. So in anticipation of this movie. So let's hope Scream 6 brings in more slasher movies. Like, you know, Sony's talking about I Know What You Did Last Summer again. So we'll see. Um, check it out. Check out the rest of the reviews here on the Radio Horror YouTube channel with Katie the Blonde in Front of Fear. Check out her reviews as well. Check us out on Facebook, on our individual Facebook pages, Radio Horror and the blonde in front and we'll be back with um another movie possibly uh renfield or 65 or evil dead rise coming up